on to the LEC post game lobby. Ooh, we're in the big screen. Mom, get the camera. Anyway, I'm shocked, joined by Bettius and by Odo Amne. Where is Odo? Where is that rascal? He's on his way. Oh, uh, yes. Oh, that's all. That's, all. <laughs> oh, that's me. That's me. <laughs> Mom, get the camera. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Um, hey, Odo, congrats. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I'm a bit um, laggy, looks like, but um, it's not going to stop us from having a great time over here. No, 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 I no, agree. No. Uh, no, I mean, I do find it incredibly annoying when I'm watching something and the audio is slightly delayed, but I didn't want to put that in the viewer's heads. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just kidding. No, I'm very happy that we can talk to Odo uh, regardless. So Odo, talk to me about that game. I mean, the one thing that I remember is when you had that insane NAR ult, when it looked like Fnatic would be killing all of you uh, in your own jungle. That was kind of nuts. Yeah, I mean, that was crazy because I was like, uh, I mean, I was kind of doubting the decision to TP there because Inspired at the same time was uh, doing Herald and Graga showed and Nocturne could ult on him. So I had to kind of stay with him for a bit until he said that he's fine to just uh, finish the Herald and then I TP'd. And surprisingly, I walked through a lot of wards and they kind of knew I was coming, but they still kind of just got womboed into the wall. So that was that was kind of crazy. I did a really good job not for like making them forget that I was there. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, props to me. I did really well. Yeah, does it make you personally happy that NAR is uh, back in the meta in such a big way? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I just, my team is always conflicted where they're like, maybe you should pick Scion yeah. and take the tank duty. And I'm like, but, but NAR is fun. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, so, I mean, it's it's really nice, it's really nice, like, I feel like he got a lot of buffs and it makes him kind of more reliable, he still has a lot of, uh, a lot of windows for counterplay, so to say, but overall I feel like he's a really solid champ and I'm having a lot of, I'm, I'm having a blast playing this champ. I mean, you seem to be playing extremely well, Odo. Um, I think Thank you. that That's your so nice introduction you. to Rogue has been the biggest impact uh this split and i think that uh your introduction to the team the fact that you don't know what your jungler looks like anymore the fact that you uh consistently <laughs> you know we brand you as the weak side king but to be fair the fact that you have the laning stats that you do without any jungle assistance whatsoever i think is incredible so like huge props to you Odo. i think you've had in my opinion the best split of your career i don't know if you would agree with that but uh, i think you've been phenomenal Thank you. I mean, uh, thanks a lot. Like, I really appreciate the praise. But uh, yeah, I mean, I would say I have the best split of my career. Um, I'm playing. I mean, I'm really lucky to to have ended up in Rogue and play with like the caliber of players I play with right now. It kind of reminds me of my 2016 days where I was playing with Yankos, uh, and I feel like I'm doing a lot better now. And I feel like just the level of talent on this team is a lot. Uh, a lot higher than I had in 2016. So it's not only me, I feel like just everyone is kind of like um, able to enable me to do the things I do. And I feel like, yeah, Rogue is fitting like a glove for me so far. Yeah, um, I like that you said that because um, I, watched a pre-split interview with you and that's exactly what you said you said you longed for the days that you were on a team where everyone else on the team was also in the top one top two maximum top three of their own position and it does look like it's coming close for rogue um and on top of that the good news show for odo doesn't stop because you're the key player of the game odo yes wow 68 percent of the Thank votes you guys. no confetti this i mean time? that's what happens that's what happens when you do Mega Nar at 12 minutes in the game, and then everyone is like, oh, oh my god, that's that was a crazy play. So everyone doesn't really like uh, look at the rest of the game. But uh, I mean, everyone had a really good game, and uh, I mean, it's kind of it, it's hard to it's hard to give it up, give it out to someone when there's like inspired was also smurfing out of control this game. But uh, sometimes I have to take the dub over him, so he stops <laughs> uh, whining and complaining as much as he does. I, I will say, <laughs> I will say that it has been a struggle for us too, um, because whenever we have MVP discussions, I think that it's like you can make an argument for many players on your team because it's that different people have had so much impact at different parts of the split, and it feels like that it really is a huge team effort, which is also what I think makes you so close to G2. So Rogue have definitely been a pleasure to watch. But if you could pick someone 
on Rogue. And you can pick yourself. Who do you think Rogue's MVP would be of the split? Um, as much as I would like to pick myself, I feel like um, my performance or like even the team's performance wouldn't be nearly as high without like inspired. I feel like this guy is such an amazing player and he's so crazy talented and I feel like he's just enabling all of us to do the things we do and it's just so easy for us to just kind of play around the things he wants to do because he's like so confident and he knows what he wants and what he needs to like carry a game. So I feel like he's a really big uh, enabler of our uh, success this year. Yeah, we're seeing, we actually have an MVP segment prepared, which Fetty has pulled the trigger on a bit oh. early, but that's totally <laughs> fine because this fits perfectly. Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of the analysts have also said that they really, really like Inspired, and I, I do feel like it's sometimes hard to say with uh, junglers because it is so kind of dependent on the team system that they work in, right? But I think it's clear for everyone to see that uh, Inspired has been playing great and that he's incredibly versatile, and to hear it from you as well, I mean, that's going to convince a lot of people. But as said, we'll have a, a little bit of a... I mean, still vote for me, guys. I still oh. want to... <laughs> yeah. I was going to say that we're going to have an MVP segment where you can advertise yourself in a little bit. But first, um, I want to talk about the standings and I want to talk about the playoff bracket. So, first off, our top six. G2, Rogue, Mad Lions, Schalke, Fnatic, SK. That is how the cookie has crumbled so far. Um, of course, Schalke made it in by beating Excel and then because you beat Fnatic, you also gave them uh, fourth place, which is a bit of a gift of you to your ex-team, Odo. Yeah, I mean, I never forget the boys over at Schalke. We had, uh, <laughs> we had, we had a wild ride. Let's let's leave it at that <laughs> in uh, 2020. Uh, it was miserable, but it was also kind of a, a nice finale to it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's maybe my last gift to them because if G2 picks mad, then I kind of have to take them out again. No, they haven't. We've got the playoff bracket for spring, and G2 haven't picked Matt. Here we go. Our opening ceremony is Fnatic, uh, series rather. I'm so excited. Fnatic versus SK in the lower bracket, which means loser is out. Then we've got G2 versus Schalke, who they picked on Saturday, and Rogue versus Mad on Sunday. Vedia, so I don't mess this up, can you explain the playoff bracket format for us? Okay, everyone? so we have the upper bracket and we have the lower bracket. If you're in the lower bracket and you lose a game, you're knocked out of playoffs. If you're in the upper bracket, then in the first round, uh, the winners will move on to the, the winner's match. Uh, often we call it the king's match between the winner of the first match and the winner of the second match. The loser will be then seeded down into the lower bracket. The higher seed, so in this case, if Mad were to lose and Schalke were to lose, Mad would skip into the match, uh, I think it's five column or match six, and uh, then Schalke would be subbed in before them and they would play the winner of Fnatic versus SK. So the lower seed would be earlier on in the lower bracket. Yes, and important, of course, of course, as you said, the most thing is that in the lower bracket, only one loss and you're out. You have a bit of room if you're in that top bracket. So what do you think of that? G2 picking Schalke, that means you are up versus Matt. Um, I mean, yeah, it would have been nice to play Schalke because they kind of sneaked their way into fourth place. And a lot of people would argue that they're, uh, they're weaker than Matt. But I feel like if we just keep on going with the things we've been doing this so far this split, I don't think I'm really like concerned about facing Mad Lions over Schalke. Mm -hmm. And of course, in the worst case, you uh, have another chance. Um, when you see that playoff bracket and now the teams that are playing in the playoffs, can you tell us some of your expectations for yourself and what the possible final may be? Um, I mean, I'm quite confident that we will take down Mad. G2 is going to win against Schalke. And I mean, it, our next match against G2, if it comes to that, I feel like it's going to be Crazy because apparently I did not know before I signed with Rogue that Rogue was zero and eight against G2, so that doesn't really like look great, you know. So now we're zero ten yeah. we're in playoffs, and then we're gonna play them, and we're zero ten. But apparently they're only two three in playoffs. Yes, so yes. playoffs are actually really better, good. You know? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yes, I mean you're two and three, and you're saying it's really good. <laughs> I mean it's two more that's than That's better than many season. other teams have done against G2 for the record. Yeah. Um, but that's actually I mean, a, a great question uh, because our big question was like, Rogue, if it was in the same iteration, what would they ever be able to do versus G2? Do you think that with the changes with you and Trimby, there's enough added to Rogue that in a best of five you would be able to take down G2? Would? Yeah, I mean I think I think so definitely because. Um, 
I feel like looking back at our games so far, the split against them, I feel like both of those games were kind of loss on our mistakes, not really that they outplayed us and they were so insane. I mean, yeah, they took over the game and they snowballed it really well and there was nothing we could really do because they're just they're just good. But I feel like the point where it started, like before the snowball started, it was kind of lost on our mistakes. So uh, I'm not really, you know, super worried if I go, if we, like, if we go against them because I feel like it's on us as well because I feel like we have the level of talent to match it, you know? We just need to uh, just be composed and show up on the day. A mm -hmm. uh, final thing I want to ask you about Plefs. I'm sorry if you have... Oh, my only other question was, uh, are you excited to be on stage again? Do you think that'll make oh. a difference for a player like you, Oduamne, who uh, obviously is a, a veteran in the scene here, for, here in Europe? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it's been over a year now since since we played on stage. I was kind of getting comfy and lazy in my office chair, waiting for the LEC games to be online. But uh, going back to the studio is a, is a great feeling. I feel like it's going to change a lot of things um, for like everyone, because a lot of players might um, play differently on stage because there's always this like, you know, there was this narrative, I think, last year yeah. that uh, Mad Lions on stage was like not so good, you know, and they started playing really well because uh, everything switched to online play. So it would be interesting to see which teams show up when uh, we play l live on stage than, than online. Yeah, I think we even had that narrative for uh, Schalke mm -hmm. um, at some point, because I remember you tweeting about it or something. I don't know. It's, it's a long time ago. It oh, yeah. It was one of my did. typical salty tweets. Let's yes. not talk about it. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't want to put it that way, but Odo, I mean, you do have some so salty moments sometimes on Twitter, but we all do. I mean, they're great. You have to admit it. It's they're like, great. They are great. They're great. I enjoy them. I have to say, you've been a lot more happy also in PGL and whatnot, but I was going to bring up that Rogue without you got first place in summer and Rogue with you got second place in spring. So. You know. Uh, I mean, fine. You can you can have this dub, uh, shocks. I mean, there's. I, I mean, stats don't lie, you know. So, yeah, I'm just gonna take the L here. On the topic of stats not lying, the voting for the spring MVP is right around the corner. So we're gonna look at some candidates. Um, let's start with Odo. Let's start with Odo let's then. Verius. Uh, we talked about it this morning in Ready Check. We didn't yep. have a lot of time. So how would you make a case for All right. Mr. So Odo, I'm just gonna be straight with you. For me, you were gonna be my MVP. But then you told me to vote for Inspired, so I'm a little on no, the fence no, now. Okay. Oh, no. But no, that's, that's not true. <laughs> but Actually, this play was, was so good. Like, look at me, I'm so good. I <laughs> so basically, <laughs> my belief is that MVP is value, right? So when a player joins a roster, what do they add to that roster and how do they change it? And if you remove that player, would the dynamics of the team change? And I think that in Rogue specifically, if you just replaced Odo with another good top laner, this Rogue would not be the same as it currently is. I think that what you contribute to this team and the fact that you consistently win lane, the fact that you don't need jungle attention, the fact that you have a very flexible champion pool, basically allows your team to just do what they are already very good at. So I believe that, for me, you are the most valuable player in Europe because of how you are able to shift what was already a very good rogue into now contesting G2 and actually being a true challenger for that top spot. Wow. I mean, when you put it like that, I can't argue with you. Like, maybe, <laughs> like, you know, uh, I mean, like, maybe I'm not the best player in EU, you know, but uh, I feel like the, I mean, it's going to sound really like egotistical and selfish, but you're right. I feel like the things, the, like the way I enable Rogue, not a lot of people would be able to do it. And the value I bring to this roster and their like play style, because my thoughts coming into this team was always to just, kind of fit in on their system and allow them to do the things they've been doing well so far and just try to make them better by doing that. And I feel like I accomplished that, you know, but yep. at the same time, it doesn't mean I'm like the best player, you know, but as you said, for like the value that like someone brings to the roster, then I guess it's a, it's quite a valid point. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's always a, what is your own interpretation of what that value is for mm -hmm. other people that are other things, but usually they're they're pretty much aligned. Uh, Reckless is someone that came up as well, of course. The guy, if you talk about stats, it's absolutely nuts. And he's fit into G2 very, very well. What would you, what would you think of him as an MVP candidate, Otto? 
I mean, for sure, because there are a lot of questions for Reckless when he made the jump from Fnatic to G2, how he would like replace uh, Perks, because Perks used to be like kind of like the leader figure of the team, or like at least that's how he was perce perceived by the community and everyone. So I feel like he's kind of fitting in uh, into G2 quite well, and I feel like he's kind of blossoming at the same time. I feel like he's able to do the things he wants to do without the pressure that he was like on from like Fnatic, you know, because he was kind of like, he was always the backbone of that org and everyone looked at him as like, you know, the, the carry or the leader, you know, and I feel like now he's just, he's just playing the game, you know, he's allowed to just have fun, play, do his job. And I feel like he's doing a really, really good job at it because I, I feel like, yeah, his stats are completely insane this split. I feel like he's performing the best out of any AD carry. His positioning is always close to flawless. He doesn't die a lot and he's always doing his job. That he is. Uh, I love that you brought that up about kind of being in a new system as a player, which uh, forces you to change kind of your habits and forces you to tap into new things to learn. And I think that's also the story with you, um, because if you're a player who's played for a long time and it goes for everything in life as well, like a job you've done for a long time, sometimes you can get very, very set in your ways. And it's good to have a change that maybe you didn't anticipate, because I'm sure that a couple of years ago, um, you know, you wouldn't expect to be in that Schalke lineup. And then maybe you wouldn't expect to end up on this rogue lineup specifically, but it also has tapped into new things. Do you feel that way with the environment that you're in right now in Rogue, that we kind of are unlocking a new part of Odo Omne? Um, I, I guess so. It's, it's kind of like, you know, I've been through like uh, hard times, for example, in like the Schalke lineup, but I feel like there's always this thing with it when you change rosters, uh, and I think it's happening to Reckless as well. When you change rosters and you go into like a new environment, it's kind of like a, a shock, you know, to like, everything you know, I would say, where you're kind of like doubting or like questioning if the things you're doing are like correct or like the, the, the like values or like what you perceived as good plays in the past are like good now. So it's kind of like, at the same time, I feel like it's an advantage because going through like so many different environments, when you find that environment that clicks for you, you're able to kind of bring out everything that you kind of like adapted and learned from like all the, all the previous environments you've been in. Yeah, for sure. Uh, absolutely. And I think we're seeing that now. And is there anyone we forgot? Because you know that we in the broadcast, we get stuck on narratives and we get stuck on certain storylines. So is there someone we're forgetting in this MVP discussion that you really think that people should think about? Um, it's hard to say for other teams. Like I, I said at the beginning of the of the PGL, I feel like Inspired is not getting like, he's not getting a lot of MVPs from like our game, but I feel like He's kind of the silent uh, carry for our roster and he's doing really, really a great job, you know. So outside of him, I don't really, I don't really know who, who to name. I, I don't fair. really think of any like consistent standouts, you know. There's always like Yankos, Caps, players like them that they are always doing like good. But I feel like they didn't really shine as much like when Caps got MVP. Uh, one or two years ago, I can't remember when it was, he was absolutely insane throughout the whole split, right? And right now I feel like he's more, he's good, he's really good, but he's not really like, you know, mind-blowing how he was, um, you know, in the years he got the MVP. Mm. Yeah, it might just be also the team environment, of course. Uh, speaking about salty tweets, I know you had a bone to pick with us often in the past about MVP voting and whatnot and how it happened and then you guys didn't send in your ballots and it was all f our fault but we're not going to dig that up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're going to dig that up. <laughs> um, yeah, I was going to say, you know, the system is the same, I think, for uh, for all pro, it's all by the audience, but for the MVP and the rookie and the coach, it's still like the committee of um, the teams, the experts, the casters, journalists, and that, that big, big group of people, Odo Amni. Do you have faith that they will find the right MVP? And rookie and coach? Um, I think so. I mean, uh, even though there was always this thing that, you know, someone would take hostage the whole uh, yeah. system and troll vote and stuff, I felt like it was, it was like most of it accurate, like really accurate. Um, even though, yeah, maybe some position would be like swapped and stuff like this, I feel like it was always kind of reflective on the people who actually deserve those awards, you know? So even though the, the, um, the expert, the panel of experts doesn't really have a lot of uh, any more power with uh, all pro. I still feel like with MVP and rookie and uh, coaching staff of the split, they're going to do 
a good job. Yeah, let's see. It's going to be a battle, right? Because if the if the audience isn't happy with who was voted for the other categories, they'll just say the All Pro is the true, <laughs> the true king, the first true. team. They could very well. I mean, that. we have to give power to the masses, you know. We the do. plebs need the voice. Just not too much, right? Is that how it goes? No, yeah. sorry. Okay, so uh, <laughs> we're almost done with this PGL. A couple of things more. Today was also the deciding day in the Kia Player of the Game leaderboard, and your winner is. Armut. Armut. Yes. Of course. <laughs> You're right. I mean, he was untouchable. He got nominated and then the whole Turkish fan base always um, played for him. So yes, it's, it's exactly the same thing I said with Hans. When yeah, Hans with Hans. Uh, in MVP voting, the Frenchy boys, the baguettes are up and <laughs> for Fact, him. If he got nominated, I don't actually think he did. In this one, he could have overtaken Armut, but you snuck it away because you had the player of the game vote and you had four wins and you're in sixth place, if you want to know. You're in sixth place. Sixth place. For the technically, <laughs> technically, you're tied for second. Yes, because <laughs> technically, everyone, everyone has four votes. Oh really? Oh, it's yeah. not that. Okay, now now it's so a lot now better. what Wait, you so have I'm to do I'm is you have to tweet at LEC. I'm sorry. It's not how it works apparently. Kevin's telling. Which means that no, Kevin it's alphabetically, no, like Armut won because he's the he first letter a. of the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a part of me thinks that has what's happened yet. That's why I'm giving you four wins. You're tied, so you know you were you were given a lot of chances, Odo. Not how it works, apparently. Kevin, Kevin keeps saying <laughs> not how it works in my ear. Also, I don't know if we glossed over it too fast. Congratulations to Armut. Of course, I don't know if that's a sponsor obligation. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Armut. Uh, great job. We've been looking forward to him in the playoffs as well. And one more time. A selfie with a screen because hopefully, hopefully I actually don't know with all the COVID stuff how it's going to work, but I really hope that we can take actual selfies with people on PGL. I'm excited. No, nope. That would be great. Nope. Kevin? No, disaster. Are you joking, Kevin? Please. We'll see. Come on, we can stand far from each other. It's going to work. Okay. Right. I don't want to promise anything, but for now, we'll have the last selfie of the regular season. I'm... Smile, Odo. Is he smirking? That's as much as you can get from me. <laughs> it was a nice smirk. <laughs> Odo, thank you once again. Always a pleasure, dude. See you in playoffs. Love you, Odo. Thanks for having Best me. It was always, uh, always a pleasure. See you guys. Also, try Nocturne Top. I've heard it's really good. Yeah, we heard it's really good. Um, yeah, I was that surprised. Was... I'll do it for you, Betty. Thank you, Odo. Cut the mic. Anyway, <laughs> that was all from us tonight. Thank you to everyone for watching. Thank you to everyone behind the scenes. Once again, it's been uh, an interesting split. Some great content. The prompter's gone, but I'm sure that there's some LCS to watch. But we will see you in the playoffs. We have a break week, but then we'll be back on the 26th of March. Goodbye. Good night. Love, Love you Bye-bye. <laughs> Yay. And your smell <laughs> <laughs>
Sean has killed off Patrick. No. The shutdown for Shugalan. The TP in. The Baron buff won't be enough. And Schalke have made it to playoffs. Schalke, what an unreal performance.